What up, y'all? Welcome to Boom Bap on the Border, an El Paso hip hop story. My name is Jesus Reyes, aka Sweet Jesus. You may know me from my podcast, Sweet Jesus Radio. This project is very different from Sweet Jesus Radio. My goal with this project is to do my part in recording, chronicling, and documenting El Paso hip hop history with a focus on the 80s and the 90s. Nothing past 1999. I interviewed five of my friends, and Boom Bap on the Border is a collection of audio and video clips from those interviews. You'll also hear some dope beats from several of my producer friends. With that said, the first question is, what is your earliest memory of El Paso related hip hop and what year did it occur? I would have to say 83, 84. 83, 84, 1983, 1984. Um, and at that time, I was break dancing at the time. Oh, shit. All right. So uh, is that your first thing being a B boy? Yeah. Before, because if for those that don't know, Mark X is a DJ. That's what he's mostly known as, to my knowledge. Yeah. So you were a b boy first, like a lot of us were. Yeah. In the eighties, that was the thing. Yep. All right. So you were b boying uh, around the block. What what side of town? Northeast the whole and in, time. And in the northeast, we had uh, we had started a uh, crew called the Floor Rockers. The Floor Rockers, Northeast. Who was in this crew? Anybody we know that's still around in nah, El Paso? Uh, most. Most of the guys are not with us no more. Oh, the in the sense that they have passed. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Right. Well, rest in peace. Okay. So, how many of you guys were there? Wow, it was about eight of us. Yeah, that's a big crew. Yeah, that's and, a big crew. Um, and the crew that we used to battle was uh, Ultimate Creation. Ultimate Creation. And Wanda Wondrous Rojas. And oh, that's on the Wanda Wondrous Rojas. Yeah. Uh, Seymour House. Ultimate Creation? Yeah. Um, Damn. That, How old are you guys at this point? Shit. I was trying to do the math. 14, right? 15. Okay. So you're, okay, so you're teenagers. You're, this yeah. is your prime teenage years. Yeah. All right, man. Heck yeah. So, uh, like, they were the crew, and they... They they had man all the dudes are dope yeah <laughs> you know what well, I mean shots to one one just roll us well, well, how many guys in their crew about the same shit nah they had a lot of members they had like like twelve members dang you guys had some big ass crews even so, back then yeah so like back then um, everybody used to go to uh, a club called Wheels Plus it was a skating rink. Wheels Plus? Yeah. A skating rink called Wheels Plus. All right. Do you remember where it was located, roughly? Yeah. Um, on Montana, where, you know where the Kmart used to be on Montana? Yeah. But right across the street, there used to be Elmer's Di- Diner. Yeah. And right then there was, a, there was a bingo spot. Yeah. It was uh-huh. called Bingo's Plus. Well, back in the day, that. it used to be called Wheels Plus. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember the bingo, not the Wheels Plus. <laughs> yeah. It was a... Big ass fucking skate skating Damn, rink. Damn, I've never even heard people talk about it. All right, see, yeah, it's already. This is already. You know, I love that I'm doing this so we can record this stuff. Uh, okay, uh, any other crews you remember? Uh, there was GT Crew back then. There was Zulu Beat, Jeez, and um, GT. Those crew. are the ones that I really yeah. I can remember. And Zulu Beat, Zulu Beat, and GT Crew. So in 1997, um, I started at Eastwood High School, and uh, the first person that I had met was Everett Johnson. And what uh, what basically attracted me to him is was his fatigue. He had like the army fatigues on. Okay. And I just right away thought like Wu Tang Wu Tang Clan Killer Army, you know, like that. That's what came to mind. So I was like, okay, this guy must be into hip hop, and he was wearing Timbos. So I I went I approached him and I was like, hey man, are, are you? Are you a hip hop head? You listen to hip hop, and he's like, "Hell yeah!" And he's like, "Wu Tang." He started going Mob Deep, and he started going down the list of all his like favorite artists at the time. And um, and he was like, "What about you?" And I was like, "Yeah, I rap. You know, I freestyle. Like I'm, I, I battle rap. I make beats. Like everything." 
And um, and he's like, oh shit, okay. He's like, you know what? I need it. He's like, I don't rap, but I need to introduce you to my boy. He's a he's he's a b boy. And then I I know another guy that's a DJ, and you guys might click. And I was like, okay, cool word. He's like, what do you, what are you doing for lunch? I was like, nothing, just chilling. I didn't know anybody, you know. I was brand new. And he uh, met with me at, at, at the lunchroom, and we were just like talking, just chopping it up, you know. And I met him after school, and he took me to um, DJ Paramedic's house, and. Um, that's where oh we, well hold on rewind that back a little bit we met up with uh alvin from air force i don't know if you remember air force air force yes. crew yeah, so I, um, I remember him a little yeah uh so we met with alvin and then alvin took us to pete's house and we went to dj paramedics house and that's where i met all of air force crew i met um little louie i met uh big david i met like all the dudes there oops um, Oops was like the head of that crew and um, Ever was there and he he basically told uh, Oops and Medic he's like hey this guy raps he's like check him out he just moved here from San Antonio and they're like oh yeah let me hear you rap man and I was like alright cool so I busted some freestyles and then um, after that Oops came up to me and he was like hey man you're really good and he's like we're going to this battle on Friday um, I think it was Friday so we're going to this battle on Friday on the west side, and he's like, "There's going to be a there's going to be an MC battle there." And he's like, "There's not a lot of rappers in El Paso that I know of." And he's like, "But they're going to have like a like an MC battle," and um, and I was like, "Okay, cool." So we we ended up getting together that week. Uh, we all drove together. Oops was older, so he had a car and shit. So he drove everybody in this big ass fucking stretched. I think it was. And um, I walk into this venue, and it's it's obviously dark you know fucking laser lights and shit just typical club ambiance and um i'm looking for like the person that i gotta sign up with and i see some dude with like a pen and a pad and he's just walking around signing people up for the battle so i went up to him and i put my name on the list and uh there was probably like i want to say you know my memory is not that great but probably like maybe four of us or five of us that was on the list so it wasn't that many um i mean you know El Paso hip hop in the late 90s wasn't really like you know booming the way it is now you know what i mean so uh we we signed up for the battle i went i went did my thing or whatever and i i took out um i think i took out the first mc and then they took me on the next one and i'm uh the next one was actually daryl so it was da so i ended up battling da that night and he'll tell you till this day I fucking smoked his ass dude <laughs> okay I took his ass out and that was so fun, man. Cause I, I, that night, like he, I, I earned his respect and we chopped it up in the parking lot. And that's where we decided that we were going to form fourth dimension. What was that? So that was my first experience with El Paso hip hop. All right. So when I moved here to El Paso, I started attending El Paso community college, uh, uh, the, the few friends that I had here at the time weren't really, you know, hip hop heads or into the scene, but there was a Run DMC concert that same year, 1987 at Fort Bliss. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go. I went by myself, ended up seeing a classmate that I would bump into there at Community College over here in the Northeast Trans Mountain. Started talking to him. His name was James Stroman. He went by Coolski and he was in a group called Rockbox. So that's my earliest memory as far as anything hip hop related when I first moved back. And this was in 1987, Run On our block and it's funny because just the other day i was going through some of my old uh boxes of cassette tapes you know and i was i was like man I, I wish i could find 
you know, I, I there was this one mixtape that I had, and um, there's this cat DJ Willie Will. Oh shit! And uh, he's he's from the old school Northeast Mar Marine Circle block, bro. And uh, he was one of the older homies, you know, like he. Right. So he was like a senior when we were freshmen. And he was like the DJ on the block. Like he had turntables, he had the records. And funny thing was is, you know, kind of how the story connects is he was, you know, obviously back then there was a handful of guys that were like doing what he was doing, DJing and listening to hip hop. So Mark X was in those circles, Pooh, um, and they're, they're homies. And, and I, I met, well, I saw Will for the first time in many years, like a, about a year or two ago really? dur during COVID. Cool. And he didn't really remember me he kind of <clears throat> i was a little youngster yeah. you know what i'm saying so i knew so one of my homies back in the day danny rivera had an older brother named sam sam rivera and uh they they lived down the block danny was my best friend he was one of my first best friends because we'd hoop together and um sam was like older and he was he knew all the older dudes on the block you know what i mean kind of like the the ogs in yeah. the neighborhood you know what i mean and so we would all play basketball and stuff together and <clears throat> finding out will dj'd and he always had these mixed tapes and he would just make them and hook up make copies and hook up the homies and i would listen to that tape over and over nice. and um it was it was crazy because i i i just i was hoping i could find it and i found it and nice. i was telling him i was like dude i got your first tape so like to me that was my first introduction to somebody locally doing hip-hop you know what i mean so in 80 I need Mark for this one. For I think it was '86. All right, so I wasn't I wasn't a hip hop fan, but I didn't become a hip hop fan until fast, and I didn't become a hip hop fan till I heard this radio show on KTEP. It was a rap hip hop show, and I'm gonna tell you this was my what I did. El Paso Hip Hop came from this. It was a radio show with Chaz, Shay, and all these kids from the Northeast that were at UTEP. They had this show. And I heard the whole Roxanne saga. They, on one of the episodes, they played the whole Roxanne saga. More like fucking 20 records. It was uh, Shay, uh, Chaz, I forgot the other homeboy, but I think it was three of them. And they had a show on K KTEP or KTEP on the uh, UTEP radio channel, 88.5. And uh, there was community radio. And I remember the first when I first heard them, they were on, I think, on Friday night. And then they switched to Monday. I guess they thought that they weren't going to be slapping. These motherfuckers had... They're the first motherfuckers to put local motherfuckers on the map. Because there was this group called Artists of Rhythm. They were a hip-hop group out of Northeast. I think Andrew. Then they would battle everybody around the city. I bugged out because I was in the breakdown. So I was used to that breakdancing battle shit. But when you hear it on the radio, you like, and, you know, I was part of a group called Black Rain. One of the group members, uh, his real name is Victor Austin, we all call him Sight, was part of another group that beat these guys. Now, Vic, well, man, ain't nobody to touch him. I, I, to this day, I'll tell you nobody can touch him. He's 55 or some shit. But... I already knew Victor. I just didn't know Victor was the same dude that was on the radio battling these cats. I'm sitting here like, oh my God. So my first memory was they were already playing hip hop and hip -hop on radio and you just had to be cool 
to it was because it was like B ninety two. What was that fucking radio station? B ninety four FM. Yeah, it was just those stations, and they would not play hip hop to save their lives. You know what I'm saying? I remember. So a lot of us was connected to the East Coast. So, but these guys in El Paso were doing the same motherfucking thing. And they were, it, yeah. And they, they weren't, they weren't getting the music six, seven months later. <laughs> if Stretch and Barbito or somebody played, that shit was on the radio in El Paso the next day. Yeah, it was Artist always of rhythm. The yeah, point. man, it was this white. It was a white kid that could rap his fucking ass off. And I could be wrong, but I remember I saw them at the mall when I was battling. Like I said, I don't want to put Mark out there. I didn't know Mark, but Mark used to break dance before, like when he was learning how to DJ. So I would see Mark, but I didn't know who he was because he was skinny. I met the big Mark, like in 1988. But the thing was about them was I saw them perform. And I saw this white dude, and I remember he had a black Raiders cap. And I said, and remember, this is all around the very beginning of NWA and Posse. And we're like, if you didn't go to the West Coast, you had no idea what the fuck Compton was. And so that was in the very beginning of that, that era that was about to kill all of us in El Paso. Like, we were just like, oh, my God. Easy E and all this. And then we, well, these dudes was all, the other dude had a King's hat on, a, um, LA King's hat. I ain't never seen none of that shit before. So I was just amazed at all this because I was young, man. I was like, what, 12? So they had that, they had these MC battles before any of us even existed.